we be, becoming aware of movement is, you know, a technique can, that can lower high muscle tone, for instance, without trying to, you know, knead it with, with massage and so on. Um, awareness becomes really important in the Parkinson's case of John Pepper. So he, he was a guy in a different but subtle way. He was a man who was diagnosed in, sorry, he had his first Parkinson's signs in his early 30s. Michael J. Fox had that experience, unfortunately. And he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. At the time, he was doing a lot of physical exercise for his back. And he would go at everything quite zealously and fiercely and working very hard. And the Parkinson's was getting the better of him. And he could lift fewer, you know, fewer and fewer pounds over time, et cetera. He was put on the usual Parkinson's medications, including L-DOPA. Uh, and initially, he had a good response to it. But then he started to get side effects. And the response started to wane. Um, he was very, very depressed for a couple of years, too. Um, and he, he just had this kind of epiphany that he had been feeling sorry for himself and allowing himself to experience himself as, as the victim of fate. And that hadn't been his way. And then he had a very, uh, you might argue, simple-minded idea, but time will tell. He said, I've got a movement disorder. Maybe what I should do is do everything I can to move while I still can. And as it happened, his wife had wanted to lose a few pounds. And there was this wonderful program in South Africa called Run Walk for Life. And in that program, they, they've taken many sedentary people, many sick people, and got them walking. And the essence of it is you can only walk 10 minutes every other day as you start. And then a couple of weeks has to elapse and lapse and uh, elapse, I guess, and then you go on to 15 minutes and 20, and you build up very, very slowly. This went against his character. Um, he wanted just to get in, and he said, I already do aerobics. Anyway, he went on walks with his wife, Shirley, and he obeyed. Um, <laughs> and one day, one of the supervisors, not knowing he had Parkinson's, said, you know, Pepper, you're stooped. Stand up straight. You know, pull your shoulders back. And he did that, and he actually found that he had to concentrate to do it, but it worked better for him. And so one of the things that happens in Parkinson's, two things that happen in Parkinson's are the following. Um, there's a part of the brain called ba the basal ganglia. And its function is to knit together individual movements into automatic sequences. And you know, we think of walking as just something natural. But for human beings, you actually have to learn how to walk by your mistakes. And if you watch a kid learning to walk, they're really doing one thing at a time, right? They're lifting the thigh and then about to fall over and put up, swinging it forward and then putting their foot down. So those kinds of activities are, are very challenging in Parkinson's because they're automatic or brushing your teeth or getting dressed in the morning. So what he started doing was concentrating on every little detail. He called it his conscious walking technique. And I, I've since met a man um, from the United States who, in parallel, had developed that kind of approach. And it seems to be using the frontal lobes to walk instead of using a lot of the basal ganglia circuitry. So he started to do this with a lot of things. He did bizarre things, like if he was um, drinking and he had a terrible tremor, like this kind of thing, he would reach around the back of the glass, and he could bring it up to his lips without the tremor. It was using a different kind of circuitry. But the most important part of it was that it turns out that walking triggers neuronal growth, brain growth factors, and growth factors that support the connections between neurons and the infrastructure of the brain, the glial cells. And so if you get an illness where you can't move around, you're deprived of that. And it's a use it or lose it brain because it's plastic. So you start to lose that. So the fact he developed this 
unusually intensive way of walking allowed him to get the benefits of walking. And now we, I, I document this in the book, and I know some people have trouble believing it and think Pepper is a one-off perhaps, but there's just a number of studies out now. Um, and the, the, the assessments of the literature by the Mayo Clinic and, and others are now showing that indeed um, exercise um, has a significant impact in reducing um, Parkinsonian movement problems, diminishing them, and the mood problems that go with Parkinson's. Right. 